Hey guys, you're watching the Best Practices Show, where we take a look at the best business practices from the best practices all across the country. And as you're trying to make sense of the digital marketing landscape, some of us don't know where to start. So I've got the guy who wrote the book on dental marketing to give us the real story behind making sense of this entire landscape. Fred Joyle, do not miss this. Do me a favor, grab a pen and hit the share button. We'll see you in a second. Hey guys, welcome back to the Best Practices Show. We are having so much fun doing these. Like I say all the time, I'm crazy grateful that you guys are watching, giving us good feedback and great suggestions for shows. And a lot of the questions we get are about marketing. So I've got the man, the myth, the legend, the guy that wrote the book. <laughs> one of the best books ever written in dentistry. If you haven't read it, he's got another book. We're going to talk about this. And uh, we're going to talk about making sense of the digital landscape in marketing, which I we are constantly trying to figure out in this ever-changing dynamic world. So before we get started, a couple show notes. We are shooting this live on Facebook right now. So if you're watching this and you, you have a question, please add it to the feed and I'll ask Fred the man himself and we'll get the answer directly from the top. Also, if you're watching this later on, you know, as we're watching the metrics and people are watching this at all times uh, of the day, even re really late in the evening, add your question to the feed. And again, uh, we'll make sure that we get you the right answer because we want to make sure you're getting the most out of all of these uh, as we go into this. Now, my guest today, now, if you don't know him, I don't know where you've been, but uh, there are so many voices in marketing and um he has been around for a very long time, actually created a company called 1-800-DENTIST and also wrote a book it called It All Starts With Marketing, which is absolutely essential to read if you're going to start a dental practice or even be a dentist. It's really one of the best books ever written about how to create a practice and do it the right way. And you debunk a lot of myths in there uh, with great data. And Fred, I'm just going to give my intro of you, but I want you to do your intro too, is you do more research than anyone probably in the world on how great dental practices work just because you guys have the budget, you have the metrics, you have all this. So you're tracking data. And I joked with you beforehand, we're all kind of guessing based on what we see, but man, you see the real deal. Now, if people don't know who Fred Joyle, who's Fred, what's your story? How'd you, you know, cause some people might know you, but some people might not. Who's Fred? That's, that's the reality is they either heard me, heard of me or they haven't heard of me, Kirk. So, uh, I started 1-800-DENTIST 31 years ago, uh, which is a referral service for dentists. We run advertising, People call our call center. We match them with dentists that are listed as members in our service that we have tons of information on. Uh, and, you know, for many, many years, we were in television, the world, promoting ourselves. We spend about $25 million a year in advertising. Uh, and, you know, when we're handling millions of contacts over the course of the year that come through us online, that come through us through the call center, this is where the learning has come, as well as the thousands of members that I've interacted with and seen what works with them and, and uh, have learned from them what, what gets people from being a referral to a patient. That's the, the big transition. And, and, and how this whole world has morphed. You know, I've written Everything is Marketing was my first book, which really said you have to be thinking about marketing from a standpoint of everything that you do in your practice, that everything that they experience in the practice either increases or decreases case acceptance. And this is what I was lecturing on for years, wrote the book on it, revised it four or five times because the online world keeps changing, which is really our theme today, right? Is mm -hmm. the online world is a moving target and you blink and it's, it's all the way over there. Um, and so we've had to adopt as a business all different approaches to consumer marketing. And the landscape has changed completely. So I wrote a second book called Becoming Remarkable, mm -hmm. which is uh, uh, gonna be a lot of what we focus on today is that 
when I say remarkable, I mean it literally. I mean, people are remarking with their thumbs about the experience of being your patient. Mm -hmm. And without that, you're in a lot of trouble. Without that, your reputation is being built online permanently, completely out of your control if you're not paying attention, if you're not actively, systematically approaching it with the, the techniques that work to create that reputation. Right. So that's who I am. Yeah. Now I want you to talk about why this is so important because you and I were talking and you do all this research and you were trying to determine how reviews influence doctors. Cho like tell everybody that story. Cause that blows my mind. Like why is yeah. this conversation so important today? So for many, many years, we ran a live call center and, and that was exclusively how people found a dentist through us. They would talk to an operator and we would match them. Now, of course you go into the digital world the website became more and more of a place where they would at least start their search and then maybe we would talk to them at some point in the conversation. What has happened now is that we have a whole module in the site that's on the phone or in the, uh, the website on the computer where they can find a dentist that takes their insurance, is near them, that uh, it, you know does the treatments that they're looking for and has an appointment available when they want. They can do all of that and choose dentists that, 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 that appeal to them right now in, in each dentist profile and they can complete it all online. That's the important thing. Cause don't forget if they're under 35, they don't want to talk to a human being unless it's absolutely necessary. And so, uh, especially when it involves anything that could be done with an app or a computer. Right. So we've had to adapt that. So uh, we have reviews of the of many of our members. There are list, reviews from actual patients who have been to the practice. Now, a certain percentage of our members, kind of old school folks who who haven't generated any reviews from their patients on our site. And I was I, I was quizzing you. I said, "What when when people are searching online and you're going to complete the whole referral online? What percentage of doctors do they choose without reviews?" Yeah, and I didn't know the answer. I was afraid to ask because I yeah. knew it wasn't going to be good. It's zero. Zero. They actually, if they don't see a review of the dentist, they go to the next one. And this is what they're doing all over the digital world because. Online re reviews about everything have become, and checking them have become normal behavior for people. And this is this is a, a has been happening for a while. Amazon really started it with books, and they put real reviews up, and the publishers went nuts. If right. you remember, they were like, "You can't put negative reviews up of our books; it will destroy the 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 whole business." And it didn't. It what it did is it gave authentic re reviews for people to read about the book and make a decision for themselves. So they learn to do that. Then TripAdvisor comes along and Yelp comes along. And, and now there's a whole bunch of people. They don't, if they eat out, they check Yelp before they decide where to eat. Yeah. Especially if they go to a new town. Now, this is so funny too, because whenever I go on vacation, TripAdvisor is like my, that's, it's, it, you know, cause it doesn't lie. It doesn't lie. The number one restaurant in any town you go to, you go, okay, that was amazing. Now, the other thing, I want you to speak to this because the choosing factor is important. I hear this from restorative dentists all the time. They're like, man, it is crazy how different it is. I used to get so many patients just from referrals. And now I got to tell you, it's like half and half and almost there are months where it's, it's, re it's reviews. And I'm like, this yeah. is weird. So yeah. It's, it's the, the online review world has shifted word of mouth to word of thumb is what I, what I call it. Because even if you say to your coworker, who's your dentist? I'm looking for a dentist. He right. says, you know, Abe Jackson in, in uh, Tallahassee. He says, great. What does he do? He goes online and he looks up the dentist. He doesn't mm. take your word for it anymore. Right. So, that's, that's a big difference. And uh, you know, he'll look at the website. He may go look at a Yelp review. He may, that may, that's the starting point word of mouth a lot of times. And that's what the doctors are. Sometimes they're missing, uh, is that th these decisions are made because it's so easy to check your website, to check your review site and check social media. We're going to talk about Facebook too, because that's become more and more important. 
The mm-hmm. trust that people have in Facebook is three times the trust that they have in Yelp. Really? Okay. Yeah. They and trust why is the that? recommendation because it's their friends. Uh, and they're 5,000 friends. Okay. <laughs> Right. And it's and Yelp is anonymous. So there's right. an automatic lowering of the credibility of that person and the trust you have because it's an anonymous person who could be a crackpot. And some yeah. of them actually, fortunately for dentists, some of them actually write crackpot reviews. Right. right. So that you go, well, this person's a, a lunatic. Right. This is like right. he doesn't actually want to take care of his teeth or he wants free dentistry and and he wants it to magically happen in, in an hour and a half. Um, and so that, that, that person doesn't give a valid review, but the, so the patient who's reading about it just goes, yeah, forget that. And they, when they read an intelligent review about the experience of the practice, that's what they lend credibility to, but they're going to go to Facebook and say, uh, you know, cause well, a lot of people don't realize this, that, that Facebook is searchable, just like Google, mm-hmm. that, that little search box at the top, you go, you put anything you want in there. Dentist 90210, boom, you're going to get results. You're going to get pages of dentists, and you're going to be able to see their patient's experience. Mm-hmm. And you're going to see videos they have, and you're going to see, it's just like a website, the Facebook page. It's virtually no difference, except the content is created by the consumer rather right. than the dentist who built the website. That's a big right. difference. And right. it's why it has so much credibility. And let's not forget how much people use Facebook, okay? Because mm-hmm. you're going to say, you're going to meet dentists who've heard this rumor that Facebook is dead, right? It's over. Uh, and people are on Snapchat now. It's like, this is how dead Facebook is. 66% of the billion and a half users go every day to Facebook. One okay. out of every five minutes online is on Facebook. Wow. That's how dead Facebook is. Okay. <laughs> I hope I die like that. May my business <laughs> go down like Facebook is going down. You yeah. know, I mean, that's the thing that, you know, they may be on, if they're young enough and technically not a patient. Now, as an aside, if you're an ortho, you got to be on Instagram. You got to, you might have to do some Snapchat because your target is 13 to 17 you're you're working in 12 to 17 even they're putting that stuff up there so so that's almost a different category but instagram is owned by facebook and feeds straight up to facebook so you can you can ride two logs down the same river in that case right Um, yeah but but ignore thinking that facebook isn't the medium and just let's contrast this with something else because people go well what about linkedin that's it's like the average linkedin user you know how often they go? Oh. Once a month. Once a month. Once wow. a month. Wow. Yeah. That's a big difference from one out of every five minutes online. Right. So, you know, LinkedIn is a different thing. It's not, if somebody says, oh, I'm going to teach you how to use LinkedIn to fill your practice with patients, run from that person. <laughs> now, hey, I have so many questions and we're getting uh, okay. good questions now. How, how, you know, you hear these stats how much time does the average Facebook user spend on? So one in five minutes online is on Facebook, but let's take an average person. How much time does the average person spend on Facebook? Do you know the stat or not? I'm just curious. If you don't, that's okay. 27 hours a month. 27 hours a month. That's now, a lot of times they're doing something else. They're on Facebook while they're watching TV or on their computer and stuff like that. They're, they're, but they're, the average daily <laughs> user is on 27 hours a month. Where the heck did that time come from? Uh, Television watching is the number one thing. Work, okay, they're doing it at work. Um, And sometimes that helps at work. I know practices that let their teams interact on Facebook because it's generating interest and content on the practice's Facebook page. You can't can't hide from social media. You can't wait for this trend to be over, okay? It's only going to be more impactful. Yeah. Now, I got another question for Dr. Khan. He asked this question. Going back to reviews, beyond asking a patient for a review, how do you motivate patients to submit reviews? You know? The, the, and it's important to remember, you don't need a million of them. If you've okay. got one a week, that's huge, okay? If you've got one Yelp review and one Google review, because those are the two avenues you want to work. 
in terms of generating reviews. One, one Yelp review, one, one Google review. A week, that's 50. That's a, that's a super abundance, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and, they, and they're just gonna, they're never gonna go away. They're gonna keep adding up. And remind me of an, an interesting new behavior about reviews and, and star ratings and stuff like that. I wanna okay. mention that. But the number, the most effective way and Yelp tries to discourage this, and I don't care, uh, is they don't, they don't want you to email your patients and say, please do a review of us. Do it anyway. Okay. Because that's, the patient is, a lot of times, just can't remember to do it. But if you make it easy, this is life, right? The easier you make it, the more people are going to do it. If you email them, and there's tons of software. I have Patient Activator, there's... Uh, Revenue Well, Solution Reach, Demand Force, all of these patient communication softwares allow you to email your patients and with a little button in it, a, a little click that they go and it goes straight into the Google or Yelp profile. Right. That's what you're going to do. You're going to email and, it, and it's not don't email all your patients in one day. This is part of the, 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 the social media person's job in the office is, is to send out 30 or 40 of those a week. That's awesome. So people, people who have Gmail addresses generally are who you're going to send and ask for a Google review. Uh, right. And other people you're going to ask for a Yelp review. And then some of them are going to do it. Now, that stat that I wanted to point out to you, how important it is to have more than a few reviews, is okay. the latest behavior with consumers, particularly on Google, is when, when the search page comes up, the search results are there, they, the, Google shows how, their star rating and how many reviews. Okay. If people see five stars and two reviews, they don't click. Okay. If they see four stars or four and a half stars and 120 reviews, now they'll click. They won't even read any of the reviews. They're going by, oh, this is a lot of reviews. That's a decent rating. That's all I need to know. I'm clicking here. Because they're trying to make a choice from a page of, of seven or eight or ten options. Mm -hmm. So that alone is ha having a certain number of reviews and, and high ratings. Okay? You don't want, you know, you know, if you're a three or below, you're, you're, you're out. That's, people go four and five stars. That's, that's the simple guideline now. Restaurants, right. everything, you know. Well, you say that with Open Table, anybody that has over a thousand reviews and it's consistently four point five, you know that's spot on. But two reviews, you're like, come on, like how long have yeah. you been in business? Mom and Dad question. wrote those, yeah. right? And that, was, <laughs> that was it. They couldn't get their brother to do it. Okay, right, so, right, right. Well, you you've seen this though, and they're really cracking down on fake reviews on every platform, including like even podcasts or products. You know, when it's a dummy review, you're like, there's no insight. It's just product was excellent. Exclamation yes, right, point. Right. You know, it's a, it's fully generic, right? It has right. Actually no specifics in it. Um, right. it's, it's pretty wild. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's, there's companies that are paying people in the Ukraine to do reviews for them, you know, by the thousands because they want the numbers, but, uh, you know, Yelp and Google are smart enough to filter those out. So. Right. Now you watch all these two. Now, how important is the ask before the send of the review? Because I've heard this from many people. You have to tell people that you're going to, you're going to send them something via text or email. I heard it increases the effectiveness of the actual reviews. Is that true? Absolutely. Yeah. Because okay. you, you, what, what you're going to do is say, we'd love it if you do a review for us. If you've had a great experience, we'd love it if you, if you did a review on, on Google or, or Yelp for us. We're going to send you an email, and you can choose which one you, you want to click on and do it on. But we'll, don't worry. You don't have to do it now, but we, we'd love you to click on it. Now, if you want to do a little Facebook video, we're happy to do that right now. Okay. That's awesome. Want, that's another thing you want to, you know, and, and some people are going to go, hell yeah, let's do that. You know, let's that'll be that. easier. I don't, I don't, I don't like to type anyway. Now you know, I'm going to go back to this, what you said earlier, under 35, they don't want to talk to anybody. And I'm finding a lot of kids, like even some of the dentists under 35, they don't really pay attention to their email all that much. And my, my kids even, they, they have an email address, but they look at it like the Europeans do like once a month or whatever type of a thing. So uh, is text or email a better way to send? Have you found a response rate better in those mediums? Um, it, 
the, the, the thing about sending a text request is it's harder to put all of the information in. You can do it. It's okay. one way to do it because you can put a link. But now you're asking them to do the whole review on their phone, which right. they may do. Uh, and the younger they are, the more likely they are to do it. Um, but email is, a, again, it's, it's a percentage game. This is always hard for dentists to grasp. It's like, like oh, I, they, they'll say, well, I hate that. I never open my email. I never, I, I, I delete those. It's like, don't go by you, okay? Right. Don't, we don't, we need one out of 50 people to do this. It's wow. everything in marketing is a numbers game. There's no such thing as batting a thousand in advertising. Um, right. Because we'd all be drinking Coca-Cola, right? If they could <laughs> figure it, that's all we would drink. There would be no beer. There'd be no water. There'd be Coca-Cola. If that's what you could do with advertising, okay? That's not how it works. Right. So you're just trying to get a, 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 a sufficient response from a large number. Yeah. Now, I want, to, I want you to talk a little bit more about that because when you're decoding the digital landscape of marketing, like you're trying to figure this out even for your own business. You know, Facebook is changing the algorithms. You guys are going all chips in or big chips in in YouTube. Can you tell us what you're, th I mean, because you're thinking about this not only for your business, but for dentists too. So give us some insight on that. Well, we, we've moved completely away from television as our, as our primary source of referrals because Nobody watches in real time anymore. I mean, that's mm -hmm. that's a gross generalization, but it's it's you can watch the decline. They either fast forward through commercials or they're watching it on Netflix or something like that without commercials. Um, but we have had we have if you're not on a sporting event, they'll watch sports live because right. they don't want to see the. They're not going to watch it later after the game's over, right? Right. So if you're selling beer and Doritos and, and cars and fast food, you're fine. On, yeah, uh, or Viagra. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and so uh, and, then the, and then the older generation, much older, over 60, is watching the evening news. And that's where they get the Viagra and every, every, every you know, did you just wet your pants here? We've got a drug for you. I mean, it's like that, that's an endless stream of that stuff. You said stream. I said I, I, I actually – defaulted to that word but yeah. um but that's what th that's how that medium's changed so we've moved a massive amount of money online we okay. spend almost half a million dollars a month on facebook we spend even more than that on google wow. okay and we have several other channels that we're using and we're refining youtube as the new commercial channel in that you can create a tv commercial that you stick in front of a video that people watch and people say yeah well i click on those i get rid of those after five seconds and i go great i only want the people who are interested that's the beauty of it mm -hmm. this is you you make the first five seconds interesting to those people who are interested if i say if you don't have a dentist and you're thinking that you need one i've said that in less than five seconds that's the only person i need to watch the rest of it right it, right. Let the other guys click, okay? Because then Google doesn't charge me. Right. So uh, it's it's a become this brilliant new medium that we are learning to master because you know Google just passed a, a, a billion videos watched a day. Wow, that's, that's worldwide, insane. okay? But that's that's what people are doing. They watch videos. Yeah, they will. They are ten times more likely to watch a video than read long content on right. a website. Very important to understand that. Yeah, and I mean, you think is, it's going to replace TV altogether in some respects? I, I think that streaming television is, is going to replace network television over time. Because okay. even, even ESPN, which was the most valuable property Disney owns, is is in the ever declining usership and and subscribership and 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 ad revenue because e e because they're not they're talking about sports they don't have a live event they're blabbing about the live event or the, the event that just happened so they can watch that anytime they want and so they're they're it's harder and harder to sell advertising they're not going to sit and watch TV and watch the commercials on a commentary about the sports. Okay. So, so th that all of that stuff is is changing. Television is gonna the networks are at, at a total loss. 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're reinventing how they broadcast shows and where they stick commercials and stuff like that. Um, and, and they've, they're living off of political campaigns right now, right? But even the politicians in the last election, the politicians moved something like 65% of their money online that used right. to just be dumped into television. Right now, you know, you, you and I were coming up with a word and we chose the word landscape, but you could also use the word landslide. First, it was yes. the, you know, newspapers. And now it depends we're watching. where you're standing. Right <laughs> <laughs> now, this is changing so fast. And you were talking about the effectiveness of a video, like how you, you mentioned people will watch a video, but really, truly, how effective is video in a dental practice nowadays more than ever? It's it is the most versatile and the most credible tool that you have. Okay, why? You have a patient testimonial that you've done. You just grabbed your phone and asked the patient, would you do, uh, would you do just a 30-second uh, testimonial about the practice? That We would love it if you would do that. Mm -hmm. People are going to say yes. Right. Not everybody. You don't need everybody. And some, and you develop a sense of who's going to be a really happy patient, really good mood. They're used to making videos. They do this. They walk around and do this all day long. Mm -hmm. And they'll and just say, just tell us what, what, what do I say? What do I, you know, just say, tell us what it's like to be a patient in our practice. They will say, and those use those exact words. And that's that cues. And you say, Look, if you don't like it, we won't use it. If you want to do it again, we'll do it again. But most likely, you'll be fine. 30 seconds, 20 right. seconds, whatever. They will speak from the heart. And they will talk about what it's like not to be clinically treated, but what it feels like to be in your office and how they, how they appreciate that. Right. And now you've got it. And you, and you can put it on Facebook, you can put it on your YouTube channel, you can put it in your website, you can build it into your, everybody should have a Yelp and Google profile where you can put video and pictures and everything for free in your right. profile. You stick some of these testimonials right in there. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's all out there and it's more believable than anything that, and I, and I also, I stress do not do big production value. You see some of these practices that do it. They set up a whole shoot and they got a makeup artist and, and cameraman and lighting and stuff like that. And they sit people down and they do a really nice video. And that's, that's great to do a practice exposure video. What's it like in our practice and tour the office, build that in and some patients saying stuff. Right. But the real power is when somebody goes, uh, you know, I, I've been coming here for 15 years and I used to be terrified of the dentist, but you, you know, Dr. Robinson is just, he makes me so comfortable and, and I, and he's always taken such great care of me. And my whole family comes here now and it's like, I'm never changing dentists no matter what. Yeah. That's awesome. Now I'm seeing people do it on the new iPhones. Would you yeah. recommend that? I mean, is that, yes. is that applicable that's, now? That's yeah. the, that's the production value. That I'm okay. talking about low it, because it's one. We're going to talk Hollywood. It's one take. Okay. Unrehearsed. Right. And because of it, it's a hundred percent authentic. Mm -hmm. And what's right. interesting is I've had, I've had people do it and they'll say, and I've done testimonials like that myself. They'll do it. They'll say, can I do it again? They won't mm -hmm. do it as well the second time. Really? They're over thinking it. The ah. first time comes right out. And it doesn't matter if they stutter or they pause or they start over. That just makes it more believable. Yeah. So it's so important to remember you can overproduce these things and shrink the credibility of them. People right. want, you know, one thing to always remember is, is sound. Okay. We know okay. this. Uh, you, you don't want to be too far away or have a lot of ambient noise and stuff like that. The visual setting doesn't have to be perfect because it's 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. The sound has to be really clear because they're going to watch it on devices that often degrade the sound. Like you watch stuff on a phone, like, like the old iPhones is one speaker on the bottom, you know? So, um, so you want good sound, but that's easy to do just by keeping it quiet. The, right. the microphones are good on these devices, but it's all, that's where the credibility comes from. And, uh, and one more use of it, which I think is a fabulous one is in the morning huddles. Right, right, you right. Show to the team. 
say, this is what our patients are saying about us. This is what we get to do every day, everybody. So let's get fired up and go yeah. out there and, and, uh, and, and talk some people into taking care of themselves because yeah. that's the thing we do for them. And Fred, that is an awesome point and great use for it because, you know, if you're a team member watching this, you, everybody needs a little something before the day starts. And a lot of dentists don't run the most energizing morning huddle to the start of a day. So this is a great way to hear from somebody else. Yeah, they they sort of do that run run over the schedule kind of thing. And who's, you know, we what's our goal for the day? Okay, 3,200. And it's like, right. you know, it's like, but but bring some, bring some emotion into it. And you don't have to, if you can't do it yourself, let your patients do it. Yeah. And it's, it is, it is very, you know, the number one thing, this is my sidebar on, on team building, but I, and I tell myself this and I tell everybody that works in my office, the most underutilized tool we have in, in management and team building and motivation is appreciation, right? We don't express it enough. Mm. None of us do it. Uh, we were, we all think, well, they should be happy to have a job and they all should, you know, I give them a great place to work. And it's like, right. no, how about saying that was great. What you just said to that patient, that was fantastic. You know, That's or you guys really pulled together today. We were in chaos. And by the end of the day, bam, we, bam. we hit our goal and everything synced up and we plugged three holes and, and, and the, you know, two, two emergencies got dealt with. You guys are amazing. Yeah. Amen, buddy. According to the U.S. Department of Labor and Statistics, the number one reason Americans quit their jobs, they don't feel appreciated. feel appreciated. Yeah. Yeah. So um, there's so much. I look at you, the man behind the curtain. So like <laughs> what other things do we need to know considerations as far as the future of the digital marketing landscape? Like what should we be aware of? What should what do we not know? Um well, it, it understand that what, what you post on Facebook, for example, is very important to understand how Facebook controls who it shows to, okay? Right. So I'm going to talk some very practical stuff. Okay. On your Facebook page, which is not your profile, I'm going to go super basic. Your profile is your personal page, personal site where you post your family stuff and it's you, it's the individual stuff and you have friends. Your right. page is your business page, and it functions just like a website, including a button that you can put in that they can click that emails you to request an appointment, okay? Right. You've got a book now button right there on the Facebook page. So that's powerful. It's a, that's your page. That's where you're going to put what it's like to be a patient of the practice, and you want followers. You don't just want likes. You want followers. Okay, what's the difference between followers and likes? It's where they clicked. Okay, somebody that likes your page or liked something you post is not anywhere near as effective as somebody who says, I want to follow this page, which means they're asking to be fed stuff from that page. Right. Now, what Facebook's doing is looking at all of that stuff and deciding how much of your stuff they're going to show to your followers. Mm. They're okay. not going to, and some people say, well, I posted it. So all my patients, all my followers who were my patients who are following me saw it. No, that's not what Facebook, Facebook did. It showed it to 12% of your followers. Wow. Cause so, they're deciding who, who, and it's the same thing on the friend side. You, you don't, when you post something on a friend site, it doesn't go to all your friends. Mm. It goes to the ones that like your stuff and read your stuff and comment in your stuff. And that's diminished way down to about 12%. Right. And they're tightening up this filter to do sponsored stuff so that they can generate revenue, right? They're in the ad business. They're not in the friend sharing business. Okay. Right. That's what you have to remember about all of these guys is that it's, it's not about making you happy showing your pictures. It's about getting you there so that over here they can sell you what you might be interested in. And they work very hard at making it what you might be interested in. And you'll notice that you'll, you'll, right. if you ever click on something, man, that sort of stuff's coming at you after that. Um, it's very, they're very intelligent about that. Now, the way to increase the viewership is to share somebody else's content. Okay. When you share it. So you go to some other place, some other page, like a patient, if the patient, let's say to me, the ideal is you say to the patient, I would love it if you would do a video uh, of, of what it's like to be a patient in the practice, but let's do it with your phone and then we'll mm. share it on our page. You know what that does? 26% of your followers. 
Wow. So if you they share, look, sharing all right. somebody else's content more than doubles the action. That bears repeating. So put it on their stuff, have them share it. That's going to increase yeah, the you amount. Share, you go to their page and you share it on your page. Okay. Oh. So they post it on their profile. You share it on your page. Very, Very cool. specific step. Right. So, and that just opens it up. That's really good to know. What well, else? And, 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 and now let's go the, the, the giant leap. Okay. You know what Facebook loves more than anything? What, what we're doing right now. What? Facebook Live. 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 Live's crazy. Live goes to 50% of your followers. Wow, 50%. This is crazy. It's now, we've been doing this for two months. We have over 15,000 followers. It's growing every single day and over 247 thousand views yes. per week per week <laughs> like and I, I can't even get my brain around that but really i i'm not that smart you're the smart one but we're, we're just it's it's live I know you know, you're starting to sound smarter than me right now well no, no 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 i'm not and then the other thing people don't understand like help me make sense of this because i've had people that are like oh you only had two people on your live yesterday but what you don't realize is you're still getting great concessions when you're going live that it's got treads to it and it's going to keep going beyond the live broadcast, right? Yes. Well, I mean, and it's, and, and here's, this is the other thing they have to remember. If, if they want to do a video of the patient, they either do it live on their phone. If they say, we're going to do it on our page and we're going to do it live. Now yeah. there should be a Facebook geek in the office that knows how to do this. Right. Right. The most important thing to do, the second most important thing along with doing it live rather than just recording it is to save that recording. Right. Now why? Because if okay. you don't, it disappears from the phone because uh, Facebook doesn't want you to have it. They want to keep it on their page and on your page. And now it's their content. But there's yeah. a little box with a little arrow in it on the on the page before it's asking you, do you want to post this? Because you've recorded the video live. Mm -hmm. It's streamed live on your Facebook page. Now you want to – Facebook gives you the option. Are you done? Do you not want this to exist on your, on your page? Or do you want it to stay there as a video, as a recorded okay. video? Now, of course, we want – unless it's terrible, we, <laughs> we want to click on it. And say yes, but before you do that, there's two buttons. There's, there's you know, uh, post HD, I believe is what it says now. It's, it also changes. And then next to it, it doesn't say download to your phone. It's a little square with a little arrow in it. That's where you click on and it downloads it to your phone first. It basically wow. just saves it because it's in your phone. But Facebook, when you click um, post HD, Facebook posted HD and, and erases it from your phone. Okay. So you don't want, you want to save it first. And, and so now you've got material that you can use maybe to build the YouTube video or just take it and post it on YouTube or wherever. Now it's, it's utility is there, but you've gotten all of the magic out of Facebook, right. Facebook live, especially you now, right. boom, you're out to 50% of your users with this fabulous testimonial. Right. And you can use it everywhere else. Right. Now, I want to talk to you about this because if you watch the Super Bowl, you can see ad after ad. It seems like Zuckerberg's going all chips in on Facebook to crush Twitter or whatever. Like, he, there's no one. He, he doesn't want anyone competing with him on this platform. And I, I'm guessing live is going to be it. But in the same vein, I'm going to ask you the same question about reviews. Could you foreseeably see dentists, are dentists now doing Facebook live reviews? And are you, is that what you're saying? Do it, just go for it, right? Your Facebook page has reviews, has recommendations from your patients. They can write those things. They exist. It looks, it's, it's everything that they can get on Google uh, on your website. They can get on a Facebook page. So it's, it's people's choice, which right. way are they going to go? And they may go both ways, but, but yes, Facebook, this Facebook, the reason the algorithm favors live video is to crush YouTube. Okay. Wow. They, and, and the reason it starts playing automatically as people are scrolling down, you hit the video it starts to play, um, is because they want the viewership. Okay. 
Facebook, in the matter of a year and a half, had the top 10 most viewed videos. After wow. YouTube owning that real estate forever, it took them a year and a half, that's all, to get the top 10. Wow. Because they got so many eyeballs and they start playing it right away. Now, views, it's like, hey, I saw it. I didn't want to see it, but it started playing, you know. Mm -hmm. So they getting, they're getting the, the eyeball action. Um, and, and hey, don't forget that Zuckerberg bought uh, or, uh, Oculus, which is the 3D glasses, okay? Oh, really? The, the virtual reality glasses company. They bought that. He's going all the way into virtual reality with Facebook before it's over. So we're so, going to be able to watch with 3D glasses stuff on Facebook. Is that yeah. what you're thinking? Eventually, people will have these glasses that they wear all the time that they turn off and on. Uh, it's going to be terrible for the LASIK eye surgery business because everybody will be wearing glasses no matter what. Uh, yeah. And it'll be like, do I go watch uh, virtual reality? Am I, am I on Facebook and is it streaming this whole virtual reality world? I mean, all this stuff is coming and it's coming faster than you think. I mean, wow. there's, there's already the, in L.A. here, they've got these virtual reality gaming facilities that are just, it's unbelievable what happens. You, you, you darn near have a heart attack in the, the places. They get zombies coming at you and, you know, people in there are screaming and jumping around and, that, you know, who are experiencing it because it's real. It's, it's real in three dimensions. It's coming right at you. Yeah. Uh, now you're blowing my mind too, because digit, we were talking about this, the digital workflow is a really hot phrase to use. Now we can, you know, the possibility is going to be endless from a dental perspective, how to further market, promote, tell people's stories. I mean, you could pro possibly just fly right into their mouth, do a scan, come back right out and see their whole head come around them and go, that's crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. So and yeah, um, yeah, you can do it. Uh, the telephone. I mean, one eight hundred dentist may be that at some point. It may just be like we have, you know, a dozen retired dentists working for us who are just looking at uh, intraoral virtual reality shots of a patient's mouth and showing them and saying, "Look at this." I mean, this this amalgam is, you know, is is leaking all around the edges here. It's like you got about an hour and a half before you need to do something about this, and yeah. and so. I, all of this stuff, it, hey, it, it's it's coming. It's, it will change how we interact with the world. I mean, in, in some ways, I don't want to be in the travel business. Because people aren't going to go to Paris. They're going to go to VR Paris, you know, because right. <laughs> it's easier to do it from your from your couch while you're you're eating a hamburger rather than trying to figure out where to eat in Paris. Well, um, yeah, and the argument can be made about sporting events too. You know, you brought probably you know through Facebook, you'll be able to watch sporting events and have a better seat than you would paying for a seat. You know? Well, that's they're building these new arenas that basically there will be screens in every seat. So as you watch the game, because you watch a football game from a stadium, it's nowhere near as interesting, really, as watching it on TV. Right. So now if you can see at your seat, that's what people are doing. They're, they're all sitting there with their phones watching a football game right. in the stadium because they want to see the instant replay. They want to see the close up because you can't tell what the heck happened. You're up in the nosebleed seats. That's you know, crazy. You're, wow. you're there. You're cheering for the Patriots in two feet of snow, but you can't really see what's happening on the field. Yeah, this is crazy. I mean, there's so this is mind blowing. We can get really wild in predicting the future, but let's go back to uh, yeah. just making. If a young dentist watches 32, you know, trying to make sense of the digital landscape, Fred, what would you say? Because you've seen it change so much. Like, let's say I'm a 32 year old dentist watching this. I'm like, Fred, help me, brother. Where do I start? Give me the simple treatment plan. Where, I mean. Break it down for me. What do I need to do? Well, a 32-year-old dentist already understands social media. So right. you have to, to create uh, – the, the, it starts with, okay, beyond the digital media, you have to start with the experience of being a patient in the practice. So what is that environment of your practice like? What is the, the – uh, what is it? What do they see, touch, taste, hear, and smell? All of that matters. It goes right back to my first book. It's like that's that's right. the baseline because that's what we react to. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and number one thing to remember as that dentist is they cannot assess your clinical skills. Not probably not for five or ten years, but they can assess the experience of your practice in about twenty seconds on the right. phone. About five. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's what you have to, who is on that phone? 
is critical. And on that phone also means at that front desk. Who, where, the happiest person in town works for you at your front desk. And, that is so true. Yeah. Uh, and, and then what, what is the, the attitude of the staff? What is, how positive are they? Is it fun to be in that practice? It right. Should, now, um, now you and I talk about this all the time, but some people that were watching this might know, might not know how important what that first element you just said. I say this, I know you've said this, the most important piece of equipment in your entire office is the telephone, but give us, give us some perspective on that, you know, because people talk about it. There are entire companies built on increasing your effectiveness on the telephone. So how important is this first element you gave us? I mean, it's really the the term I always use is it's the aorta of the practice, okay? And it and it's many practices have it fully clamped off. Um, you know, there's somebody they're over screening on the phone. They're 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 like getting to the money. They're getting to the insurance before they like before they even know the person's name practically. Right. Uh, when to me, it's about come on in. See this place. You're going to love this place. You're going to love our doctor. She's amazing. You know, my whole family goes to her. It's like, don't worry about the x-rays and stuff like that. We're not going to charge you anything until you come in. We see what's going on with you. But the doctor would be very concerned about what's going on from what you've told me. I, I think you'd really like this practice. I think you need to come in. Right. Can you come in at two? Um, and, and so that's, that's what it's about. Now, maybe they have insurance that they want to stay in, in, in network and say, you know what, we, we, you should probably find a dentist that accepts your insurance, but mm -hmm. why don't you come in and see us? We'll do a, a no cost exam on you, tell you what's going on. You'll be armed with that. When you go to a practice who takes your insurance, what the heck have you just done? Mm -hmm. You've made them lust for your practice when they go to that other practice. Well, you created an with, advocate too. You're an advocate. You're truly in the yeah. advocacy position. And someday their insurance is going to change or they're going to get dropped or whatever. And they're going to go, great. Now I'm going to her. Right. You know, it's, it's a long game. Play the long game. And, but exposure to the practice, that's marketing. Okay. So you have to create that experience and everything matters. Everything they experience in that practice increases or decreases case acceptance. Nothing is neutral. And it's right. about case acceptance for that patient's benefit because there is no clinical advantage to putting off dentistry. I have yeah. never heard one. Not I've seen one. many dentists and many hygienists put it off, but right. there is no clinical advantage to it. Right. And so what you're trying to do is create something that facil facilitates acceptance of a treatment that is going to make their life better, make their health better. And it's all about the experience of the practice. Yeah. And so once you create that, now that's going to get transmitted to the digital world. People are going to write about it. They're going to remark about it. That's, that's what becoming remarkable is about is it's a remarkable practice that you have because they won't be able to resist posting something about mm -hmm. the practice. And so yeah. that, that young dentist has to build that experience and then build and, and then also he has to, or she has to be physically out in the community going, I I'm a dentist. Hey, here's my Facebook page. You know, let's, 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 let's hook up here. And, right. and, and you know, it's still you the human interaction. Hey, I believe that all of this digital social media stuff is going to make human interaction even more precious to people because they're depriving themselves of it. You know, they sit at a dinner table with all their phones out now, you know, they're right. all at dinner hypothetically together, but the kids are interacting with something else and the youngest one's playing a game and the parents are, you know, checking their Facebook page. I mean, eventually we, we, we will have not, it won't be a backlash, but it'll be a, a, a need for real human interaction. So he or she has to get out into the community, go to the businesses and say, look, I'm, 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 I'm a new dentist in, in this area. I've got a terrific practice. I'd love to do a, a lunch and learn with, with your team and, and just answer all their questions about dentistry. Mm -hmm. And because, and you need to know it as the head of HR, because the number one cause of illness in your business is 
tooth problems or oral health problems that make them susceptible to getting the flu. If somebody has gum disease, which 50% of the population over 35 has, their mm -hmm. immune system's fighting that 24 hours a day. Somebody comes near them with the flu, they get it. And they're That's out. So true. Days. Wow. So let's, I want to, I want to help you benefit by having, you know, better um, employee attendance by less sick time, but also healthier employees. So let, yeah. I would love to talk to them about all of that. You got a plan. You don't have a plan. I accept your plan, uh, whatever it is. And that's, you know, when you start off, you're going to have to accept some plans. You know, you're going to starve. Mm -hmm. If you think I'm building a fee for service practice in, in uh, midtown Manhattan, <laughs> you know, like good luck. Yeah. You know? Well, and the other thing is find a place where there isn't a dentist for every 500 people. Right. You right. Know, this is the number one mistake dentists make is they go like, I want to practice here because I want to live right over there. So I was like, it's like, do you know how many dentists there are per capita? Because mm -hmm. if it's under a thousand, you're going to be buying patients with advertising at a very expensive rate, or you're going right. to have to buy somebody's practice. Right. Go where there are less dentists. Yeah. Or you have to be incredibly dynamic and people just absolutely love you. But uh, yeah. that's a whole nother ballgame. Now, when we have all these things, because I love where you're going with this, the patient experience, the phone, you're out in the community. What do I do next? Like, you know, because you don't have to spend 50 to $80,000 getting a digital presence, do you? No, you've got to build a really good dynamic website. Okay. That, and, and the best websites now, they're very simple, they're very clear and, 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 and modern looking. Uh, you know, they usually have a carousel of photos that, that change. Uh, and they've got videos and reviews on them um, and, and uh, request an appointment thing. Very simple stuff. And then add content on other pages behind it. But the word dynamic means something very specific in a website world in that you can change content yourself. You remember when we were all building websites five, 10 years ago, like you want to change a word, you had to find your webmaster, okay? Right. And get him out of bed and, and get him, get him to, <laughs> to rewrite the whole dang code. Right. You know? Now, a website, a dynamic website is almost like a Facebook page. You want to add a picture? Add a picture. You know, yeah. you want to, you want to add a video, add a video. You want to take something out. You want to, you want reviews to come up automatically from, you, you know, Yelp or from your patient activator, uh, you know, patients goes right up automatically and, and you've got streaming reviews. All of that is Google juice, right? Google, mm -hmm. it's SEO. Okay. How do, how do I get good SEO? Ever changing content. Right. And, right. And it's not link backs and all of that stuff. It's like good, relevant, ever-changing content. Yeah, and, absolutely. And Things that you can change yourself. So once you have the website, is the, is the next effort just to, would you pour it all into Facebook? Would that be your second tier of your energy? Now, it, now it, it comes down to, uh, it, you know, Facebook is, it, it fluctuates so much in terms of your ability to get results that I probably okay. wouldn't go there first. I would probably go to uh, Google AdWords or possibly advertise on Yelp. I mean, the reality is Yelp could potentially be a good source of patience, especially if you don't have a lot of reviews yet. If you pay Yelp, you're going to show up in a search okay. um, and they're going to promote you. You know, and in the, in, when somebody searches in your area or is even looking at another dentist in your area, and if that dentist is not paying Yelp, Boom, you're, uh, you're showing up somewhere. When right. Somebody's, you know, when you have a uh, go to a dentist page who's not paying to advertise on Yelp, 13 other dentist ads appear in that, on that very same page on Yelp. Right. So, so, so define that. What do you mean by pay, pay, pay? They, Yelp? they so, have a monthly fee, like three, four, five hundred dollars $500. And okay. now if that gets you two or three patients a month, that's worth it. Okay. Right. A lot of guys go, well, that's a crazy amount of money. It's like, no. To me, a, a new patient over the life of the practice is worth between ten and fifty thousand dollars. Okay, right. you approach any other business person and say, "Look, I'm going to give you twenty thousand dollars worth of business. You're going to have to pay five hundred dollars for that customer." They say, "I will take one million. Okay, that's my <laughs> order." You say that to a dentist, he goes, "Whoa, that's a lot of money for a new patient. I would never. That's crazy. Four hundred, five hundred dollars for a new patient. That's insane." Yeah. Okay, but. You get a new patient from advertising, 
now that leads you to all of their friends, family, and coworkers. Right. Now, now and and now and their whole social environment. Okay, right. because you give them a great experience. Now they don't just have friends, family, and coworkers. They have friends, family, and coworkers on Facebook. Mm-hmm. So and on Instagram. So now you're 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 connected. So right. now you turn that what seems like an expensive value into a, a floodgate of potential patients over time. Okay, it's not instantaneous. But, you know, all, all viral growth is like this, right? Mm-hmm. It starts, right. it seems like nothing's happening, nothing, and all of a sudden, away it goes. Mm-hmm. Uh, because it's doubling. It's like bacteria. It's doubling every day. For a while, nothing's happening, and then all of a sudden, you're really sick. I mean, it, it, <laughs> it's... It's very true. Yeah, it's the same thing. And so, you got you got to wait out the results, you know, and, and, and know that it's, that it's building and build the experience and, and attract those patients. You're going to have to buy some patients for lack of a better word, one way or another. And that's going to be through 1-800-DENTIST. Um, cause we're, you know, we're, what we're doing is we're screening almost 80% of the people that contact us before we refer them to the practice. So they're a pretty good match by the time we pass them on. Right. They're still going to get They're They're not all coming in. I mean, we have two guarantees at 800 dentists. We guarantee that you'll do at least two to one in your, in your results in the first year with us. Uh, I think that's the way the guarantee reads right now, but it's something, something like that where we guarantee results. If you stay with us for a year and I, I personally guarantee they're not all coming in. Okay. Mm-hmm. If yeah. I send you a hundred people, they're not all coming. Right. That is, they're human beings. I don't have a cattle prod. I just have a phone, you know, that I can connect them to you. So they're not showing up for any number of reasons. And many of those reasons are in your control. You schedule them two weeks out. They're not coming. Right. Okay. Uh, you, you over screen them on the phone about how they're going to pay before you get them in the office. They're less likely to come. I want people, I tell all of our doctors, get them in within 48 hours. Okay? Right. Now talk about that. Cause that is a real statistic. It yeah. significantly drops off after seven, doesn't it? Seven days, but you know better than anyone. Well, it, it pitches off. I mean, you've got a 48 hour window and then the okay. half life begins. Okay. Now okay. the weekend doesn't count, but you got to get them in. And then many of my members go 48. I never go 48. Uh, I'm 24. It's like, right. I, I can get them in today. And this is, this is, um, you know, this is, practice management theory that I put out there, but I also know dentists who do it. The dentist who says, I get a new patient from advertising, no connection to the practice, not word of mouth or anything like that. So no emotional connection whatsoever. They're coming in today. I will find, there isn't a practice in America that can't see a dentist today. I mean, can't, I can't see a patient today. There isn't one that, that can't get them in Look in their mouth. Somebody does x-rays if you, if you need them, and you find out what's going on. Somebody can talk. How many minutes of that dentist time do you need? Five, seven? Right. Right. Now, you don't have so, to do a comprehensive exam. You just have to get no, them in and take I, a I, look. I, and right. Yeah. And, hey, look, if it's bad, you say, look, who's, who wants to stay after five? we got to take care of this guy, you mm-hmm. know? And, and, and you do it. And, and, hey, patient for life now. Okay. Right. You've made, you know, $2,500 doing a root canal and a crown and taking the thorn out of their paw. And they never forget that, that you did that. And you said, look, normally we, we don't have time for this, but this, I can't let you leave here without taking care of this. Yeah. Now, if you're watching this and you just listen to what Fred said, here's why it's so important because my guess is you believe that if you can get him in the door, they're going to stay. Do you know what I mean? Most everybody feels like, hey, look, they just got to come here, see how special it is. And most of them are going to stay. Now, if you don't believe they're going to stay, that's a whole other issue. That you got to fix that. Right. Yeah. Right. You don't believe they're going to stay. Or if you're right that they're not going to stay. If the reality <laughs> is they don't stay, stop advertising. <laughs> right. You got to you got to go back to square number yeah, one that you listed they're, here. They're bouncing off the front door at that point. Yeah, so, my guess is your patient experience, which was, was number one, is really poor, and you're already getting bad reviews. So um, yeah, yeah, and yeah. So your your word of mouth is is not helping you at all, and so you're buying patients furiously because you're just hoping to to produce on them, and you're going to try to produce on them the day they show up because they're not coming back. Right, right. Now in the digital landscape. So you said Google AdWords. You know, maybe y'all. Where, what would be next? Where would I put my energy and, next? And you know, they've they've built a website. Um, 
and and so then I would uh, I, I probably are gonna I'm gonna look at I'm gonna look at 800 dentists. Okay. I'm gonna I'm, I may even test something like Zocdoc because it's some of these things. It, my whole theory about them it's like I'm, I do everything that works. Okay, within a bandwidth, if you can get a patient between two and five hundred dollars, if you can get somebody in the door and that's what it's costing you, right. Do it all day long. And, 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 you know, if you're in Manhattan, if it's 700 bucks, it's worth it. Cause it, you know, their usual and customary fees in man, midtown Manhattan are, you know, they're getting 1500 bucks for a crown. Right. Um, you know, and, and some of them are getting a thousand reimbursement, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but do a try, try stuff, give it enough time to see how it works and what it yields. And, don't pull the plug. A lot of dentists give it a month and say, I, it didn't work. I mean, they do it with us. They do it with 800 dentists. Say, I, didn't, I didn't make enough money. It's like, it's the first month. You yeah. know, I, I sent you like seven people and four of them showed up and, and they're not, they're not going to, you're not going to break even today, but what are they going to spend? Who are they going to attract? If you, if you're not going to build on that, that's why we want them to stay ideally for a year. Cause that's when, if they stay a year, I got them forever. Okay. Right. Because now the ROI is there. Um, mm -hmm. and that's the way they have to look at it with, a, with a lot of their advertising is three to six months is a good test for, a, for, a, for an outside source with me. It, it's, it's longer because I'm already refining the lead. So, and, and I'm going to work with the practice if they're not converting, like if they say, geez, I don't, you, you sent me 10 people, but I only got three of them in. I don't know what's going on. We've, we said, look, we can start recording the calls. Yeah that go into your office because we record them on our side, but we can record the, the interaction between the patient. If you want, we'll do that for a month. We'll review those. And then we'll go like, you know, Mary's a, a little mean <laughs> on the phone. <laughs> you know, you've trained her to repel people, I think. Right. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and so he goes, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. but she's, she, I, she came with the practice when I bought it. It's like, right. my, you don't have to keep her, you know, it's not, it's not required. Right. Um, and she's, she's, uh, she's, she's got her foot on your, on your earning throat right now. So, yeah. uh, or we just found out maybe there's something in the profile. They say, look, we didn't want any emergencies and cause we, we were worried about getting all emergencies say, no, we can limit the number of emergencies, but emergencies are good patients. If you know, you just make sure they come in with money. Uh, right. just understand it's not a free transaction. It's like show up with money. We take care of you. Yeah. Don't show up with money. We tell you where you might have to go to get some medication. Right. Uh, and, and, and that's, and you just be clear about it, but Hey, emergencies is a procrastinator avoider. They're a gold mine of dental work waiting to happen. Yeah. And you helped me with that a long time ago because it's very easy as you learn a lot to just have this dogma take over and say, well, they're not great patients. They're incredible opportunity. We've tracked it. They can become incredible patients. They're just it that it was a time and readiness issue. They were just ready. You happen to be there, and then you gave them a great experience. So I agree. And yeah. going back to that numbers thing, not a hundred percent of them. There will be some deadbeats. There will be some people just looking for Vicodin. Okay, in the yeah. mix. Okay, um, you don't be looking to bat a thousand on these things, but know that I mean that the good eight hundred dentist members they go. I know that I'm going to get one patient a year that pays for my entire membership. Right. And the rest is gravy. Somebody's been putting off dentistry, never had a good dentist, just got divorced, going out into the, the singles marketplace. They took a good look in their mouth and went, that's a little scary. Uh, and they've got the money, they find a great dentist, and they spend $28,000 right out of the gate. And right. the doctor goes, I'm up. You know, yeah. okay, so everybody else is a bonus after that. So, because it's yeah. going to be, we call them whales. Every once in a while, you're going to catch a whale in this. Yeah. And we don't know who the heck it is. You right. can't tell over the phone. That's like the hardest thing to get across. It's like, you can't tell. Right. How, well, I don't know how much money they've saved for den dentistry. I know how much, nothing. Right. That's, that's their reserve for dentistry, goose egg. They, yeah. they have no, they're saving money for tattoos. They're not saving money. <laughs> for dentistry. <laughs> well, and when you do that a couple of times, you're more than covering the guarantee that you offer. Now, this is so cool, buddy. I have so many other questions. You and I are going to talk about a whole bunch of other, other topics on the 
just the whole landscape of marketing and different elements on um, other shows. And uh, I did, I am getting another question too. When it comes back to reviews, I think when you, when you're, if you've listened to this whole thing, obviously you want to have a great digital footprint. You want to be putting out there, but really the fulcrum for all of it is going to come back to what a patient says, either on a video or in a text as, as far as reviews goes. And our, our good friend Deepak asked this question when asking a patient for reviews, many say, I'd love to, but what should I, you know, what, what should I say? Any thoughts on how to put a little structure in the request so that patients have an idea what to write? You know, could, could you guide the patients on what to write a little bit more or a system or something to give the team when a patient says, you know, I'd love to, but what should I, you know, what should I say? You know, what should I write? What would you say to a patient? Uh, there's there's two answers to this, and and, and there's one of them's uh, a, a little trick actually. Okay. Uh, but but the the first answer, and just in terms of verbiage, is look, we we not it, it's not important how 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 you know how we worked on you, you know, like what we did in your mouth so much is l- like how do you feel about coming here? Like, it, you know, wh- why, why, why would you recommend, if you were going to recommend us to somebody else, what would you say? Right. That's right. the simplest thing. Like, and you, and it, and it doesn't have to be much. You could just say, Hey, the place is really clean. You can just suggest stuff. The doctor's really sweet. My hygienist is wonderful. I trust her completely. You, you can just say stuff like that. And they go, yeah, yeah, I would say all that. It's good. Load yeah. their lips is is the is the is the basic recommendation. What would you like them to say? What two or three things would you like them to say about your practice? Right. My whole family comes here. If that's true, don't forget to say that because you're right. you know like you you know your cousins are even in this place. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, or, or when I got implants, you know that was I, I you know I had no idea the difference it would make in my life. It's mm-hmm. like, and that's the question too. Have we made a difference in your life? Tell us how. Love that. Yeah. That is a great answer, buddy. Yeah. That's awesome. Now, you're going to see, if you haven't read Fred's first book, you got to read it. Now, your second book, even better, too, because it's really, you know, the title is, is a great title because it's not really about how to be extraordinary. It's worth making a remark, which is really the essence. And it is so well done, buddy. So, and you're going to see Fred's a great, great writer. It'll speak to exactly what you're experiencing in your practice. This is so good, buddy. Now, if people want to get a hold of you, because they are, they always do, they've always got questions. How can someone get a hold of you? Because uh, I want you to talk about your Go Ask Fred, because you have an amazing blog. You guys do webinars on there. You're always pumping out great information. Tell us about that. And then how can I contact you directly? Um, so the easiest way to contact me directly is through my blog site, goaskfred.com. Okay. Uh, it's also the best place to buy the book, the hardcover of the book. Right. Um, because, as, cause you can buy it on Amazon, but it takes longer and you pay full price. If you go and you're a, you're a, a, a viewer of the best practices show and you go on to go ask Fred to the book page and use my name, Fred Joyle. In caps, no spaces. The book's ten dollars shipped. Awesome. Either either book, uh, and I recommend getting them for the whole team. Uh, but uh, and I say that as a joke. But I but practices that do that, they get everybody on the, literally and figuratively on the same page. It's right. also on Kindle. It's also on Audible. Both books you can buy if if you're if you're a digital reader or you're a, a, a listener reader. It's, I, you can download the books on Audible, or you can go to Kindle. Yeah. So now, if they and and they can always they can you can just text me through there, or you can go to the futuredontics.com, which is our corporate page. Which, by the way, it, we have Facebook pages. If you go to the eight hundred dentist page or the Future Donics page, there's some great content to share. We post it for you to share on your Facebook page. It's all, and so, and there you get the viewership. You go like, I don't know what the heck to post today. Go to yeah. Futuronics Facebook page, go to 800 Dennis Facebook page, share it. It's just about something interesting about teeth or the, or, or the world of, of, of oral health or, or any number of interesting things that are happening, maybe a good cartoon or whatever. Just gives you content. Cause you wanna, this is, this is a uh, last thought on Facebook. You can't post too much. Okay. Right. Okay. You can only post not enough. 
Really? It's not, it's not like spam, okay? Uh-huh. It just it just scrolls down your wall. So it mm-hmm. exists, and somebody can go down and look at it, but it's not like they're getting bombarded with it, okay? Like, like email in your inbox, okay? It's a whole different thing. But if you're not there enough, that's what hurts. That's what hurts the algorithm that Facebook says, these guys never post. We're just not going to offer up this stuff. Yeah, so you and I could do 30 shows a month like this because I know you could talk and you could bring that much value for each one of those and it wouldn't be too much. <laughs> People might just get here tired of us talking, but yeah. um, but you, yeah. you're, you're right. That's so true that you say that. There's never too much content. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and use it in different places. You know, that's the, the always make, know that there are places to move it around. Like I said, in your Google and your Yelp profile, you can put videos in there. You should have a fully fleshed out everything possible that you could put in that you Google and Yelp profile, do it because it's free and it's searchable. It's, yeah. it comes up in your SEO, the richer those profiles are, the better. So right. that's that, you know, that's important to do too. So. Yeah, that is awesome. But I'm crazy grateful. Now, if you're watching this, you've got questions, add the questions. Also, I'm going to have Fred back for a whole bunch of other topics. Tell us you what bet. you want Fred to talk about, because he'll talk about anything. Gives us great details, great stats, great uh, great advice, great everything. And, and I'm just going to say it again. you got to get his books. They're just fantastic. So, buddy, thank you so much. Now, stay on for a second here. We're just going to say goodbye to everybody else. I want to just chat with you about a whole bunch of other right. stuff. But, uh, Bye, everybody. Thank Thanks for yeah. listening. Yeah, if you're watching the show, thank you so much for watching. We're crazy grateful. And again, I'm growing every single day. And if you enjoyed today's show, which I hope you did, do me a favor. Just like Fred said, hit the share button and we'll be extra grateful. Share this with your friends and uh, give us great suggestions for shows you want to see. And until we see you next time, keep watching the best practices show. You guys have a great, great rest of your day.